My name is uh, Jan Ruigendijk. I'm an audit partner uh, at Baker Tilly Berg in the Netherlands um, and I'm managing partner of our Rotterdam office. And I'm Patrick Verhoy, tax partner in the same office as Jan is, the Rotterdam office of uh, Baker Tilly Berg, mainly focusing on international structuring. Uh, what brings you to Atlanta? Meeting with clients, uh, meeting with our affiliates in, uh, in the Atlanta area, meeting with Habib, Arrogati and Wynn. Uh, on, on a mutual win that we recently did on one of their clients who uh, is doing business in Europe and see what business can bring us. How will you work with uh, Hebef on this project? Um, so far it's more something Patrick uh, has done but um, I think we will um, prepare the accounts for, uh, for that mutual, mutual client and we will also do all the compliance stuff and uh, the tax, uh, tax advisory things. And you'll be bringing your European expertise? Absolutely. First of all our Dutch experience, but if uh, it's required that we um, um, also bring in other uh, affiliates from other countries and we can play a part in coordin co coordinating, we will be more than happy to do so. Why would a company go to Europe now that there's so much financial turmoil? I think it's still a big market to, uh, to sell your products um, and it's still attractive. I mean, uh, people have buying power so you can sell your products. Um, um, it's uh, organized um, so it's safe, I think, to, to, uh, to be able to uh, progress in, uh, in Europe. This whole relationship between risk and reward, is this really a very good time when uh, there is so much turmoil and for cross-border activity? Yeah, what, what we, I mean, the Chinese, uh, they have a character for, um, for risk, which is the same um, as for uh, opportunity, I think. So all this crisis will also bring opportunities to, uh, to companies that do the right things. Could you each uh, describe a success story from your perspective in terms of a company that you've been involved with that's had a successful cross-border experience in the recent time? Now, without uh, saying any names, we, uh, we have several companies that we service at the moment. We see a really growing market over there, but we, we service uh, many companies in uh, cross-border relations. Uh, so if we take a company from the US, they come into Europe, um, they try to think that Europe is one jurisdiction, but there are so many different uh, uh, regulations, even though um, there are EU directives, but they are implemented differently in the different countries. Uh, so we coordinate. I mean, we just uh, take care of payroll, wage tax, uh, VAT issues, corporate income tax issues. We liaise with uh, partners in those countries and we can act as the single point of contact for this company. So what we basically do is uh, we take care of your compliance issues and you, uh, you can do your business. So we take care of the rest. You do business and uh, be successful in, uh, in expanding your company. Aside from the business, do you become personal friends with members of the uh, network? Um, I have a very good relationship with the uh, Indonesian part of the network. Um, we are working on the, uh, uh, on the relation with the Chinese uh, people, which is becoming more and more close, basically. I think it's, it's, it's when doing business, it's nice doing business with people you like. You tend to do more business with people you like. So, of course, you try to become friends. And it's also a matter of trust. I mean, if I send a client to China, um, I, I am depending on the Chinese uh, people to, uh, to provide the same quality services what I'm providing to the client in the Netherlands and I have to trust that they do the job. So it's very important. It's, it's uh, something I told a client yesterday when we were discussing their European expansion. I said that the big advantage of our network is that we meet each other on all these conferences. And at the end of all the technical discussions we have a beer at the bar. We have another beer. And we have a nice chat. Next time when I need someone in a jurisdiction, I will call that guy or girl, have a chat and ask her if she can do the business. She does a proper job, I can give her a call, thanks. If she doesn't, I can give her the same call, well not the same call saying thanks, and say some other words. And then pick up the phone again and say, okay, next business. 
because we can tell each other, we can assist each other, we can be honest with each other, and we can do business together. If you cannot have that relationship, which you can also give each other feedback to assist, to help each other grow the business, you cannot have a success. All we hear about is the doom and gloom in the global economy. You two seem very upbeat. What's your yep. view of the... Jan, what do you think about the global economy? Well, I mean, you have always had ups and downs. And what I uh, just told, I mean, there are also opportunities for uh, companies that are strong, are doing the right things. Um, um, if economy is growing, it's easy. I mean, everyone can do it. But in these times, you have to be more creative. Uh, you have to do a better job. So the strong companies will survive. And there will always be business. So, okay, it will go up sooner or later again. Are you as philosophical about this? Well, I agree. I agree. Uh, a, 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 a economy has a cycle. So we now on a downward cycle. The question is where we are on a downward cycle. Maybe even an up again. But things will improve. Uh, you just have to be there. I don't... I, also think that when an economy is in a crisis or your business is in a crisis, you have to be very careful selecting what you're doing. But this is the time to invest. You should do things. You sh should keep doing things, doing the right things, trying to find the right things to do. But don't stop doing business. For instance, Europe and the United States primarily, but are, do you see the, uh, the global accounting practices um, coming as a stronger structure? Well, I mean, when you work globally, um, you have to work together. I mean, I have a good example. Um, I just recently did a, a, an Indonesian client of mine with a Dutch holding company. Um, so in terms of uh, Dutch standards, I had to go there and discuss the uh, risk assessment with um, um, the auditor there and and the management there so you have to discuss what what risk do you have what uh, do you do to uh, to minimize those risks and, and how how do you uh, how did you check check those um, systems in place and i mean what i experience is that um, they were really willing to learn from us and to develop their systems do you think there it will eventually will become uniform within uh, baker tilly in Europe? The tax system? Yeah. Uh, well, there is a uniform tax system already in place regarding VAT. Uh, I think that's the experiment within Europe to see how, it, how we can cope with each other and make um, good agreements with each other and actually pay up to each other. Um, the crisis at this moment, I think, will encourage uh, the discussion on a global CIT system or a European CIC, CIT system. Uh, and we will grow nearer to each other on tax on the taxable base and on tax rates. Could you explain the CIT system? In Europe? Yeah. No. No. That's impossible. It's different for each country. Everywhere. You make By a profit. CIT, yeah. What do you mean exactly? Corporate income tax. Corporate. Income. Yes. So the corporate income tax system is different in each individual country. Um, some countries tend to uh, compete with each other on tax rates and on tax breaks. Uh, on um, deferred income and stuff like that. And in, an, in a crisis, people will move their businesses to tax beneficial jurisdictions. And that's a competition that Europe cannot have that much longer. We will have to have a unified tax system. And what, you also, what you also see is that the uh, tax authorities in different countries are really focusing in, focu focusing in uh, transfer pricing because yeah, they know that uh, um, people will go there where the the rates are the lowest. Who's benefiting now? From the low tax rates? Yeah. I think no one. Because everyone is doing something else. They're running around like chickens without head. Really? Um, some countries have set up very beneficial structures, like uh, Ireland did uh, 10, 20 years ago, and managed to land huge uh, IT companies. That's a very sound business. It was necessary to improve their economy. Uh, Luxembourg has a very special uh, system allowing a lot of quoted companies to be there, uh, be headquartered there, uh, especially mutual fund business. Um, I don't think the competition is that strong, but you will keep seeing 
moves of funds to different economies which do not correctly reflect the, the economies itself. So who's benefiting? I think individuals are benefiting, some countries are benefiting, um, but as a Europe, I don't see the real benefit. You both are positive about the future of, ben of Europe. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Could you um, just uh, tell us why? I think still things are going on. In the daily life, I don't experience too much about uh, the, the credit uh, crisis. Um, it's more about trust of people. I mean, you hear so, hear so much about the Greece crisis that people are not buying things anymore. Um, but that will change. I mean, people will become sick and tired of all this uh, credit uh, crunch talking um, and will start buying things again. How about you? I'm rather positive. I'm not an economist, so I try to keep away from, from figures as much as possible. But I think you have to see it in a historical perspective. Europe has committed to the European idea. Everyone who's not in the EU yet wants in because they see their advantages. Its stability in a, well, in a part of the world that has seen some turmoil the last hundred years. And I think it's a necessity that Europe is united. On an economic scale, on a political scale, maybe, legal, tax, we'll see what happens. It's going to take some time. 